Okay, now I will warn you, in this next set of videos somewhere, I'm very likely to be told... Can't you just look the other way this week, Joe? Come on, we can sort it out, right? It's not my call, Baron. You pay one way or another. Please, Joe. How long have we known each other? We even used to be neighbours, for Christ's sake. I'd prefer not to give you another beating, Baron. You gonna leave soon? Oh, good. I'm gonna talk to you. Cheap price, good quality. Come on, take a look. Don't be Excuse afraid. me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? I didn't answer the first one, so piss off. I'm not a journalist, I'm a doctor. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. Really? But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson to some, but Colossus Joe to most. And I don't remember asking for your service, sir. Don't be rude. Have you heard of a nurse named Dorothy Crane? She's a colleague of mine and is supposed to live around here. Dorothy Crane? Yeah, I know her. One of the few good souls who dare to help the sick around here. Could you please tell me more about her? She's a nice girl. Tries to help the migrants. I offered to give her a hand, but she said my reputation would attract too much attention. According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. That's certainly nicer. May I ask what you do around here? I'll do whatever I want, and sometimes even more. Now sod off. Jesus. How did you become the local bully everyone is afraid of, Joe? There's no pride in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well, too. A job? So you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the Wet Boot Boys, a gang from the docks. I'm their muscle for their dirty work. Okay, that's interesting. You survive at any cost, even at the expense of others. Perhaps that's just the law of nature. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons, and that's that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by-all-means-necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. I'll be talking to him in just a second. Oh, nothing. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Good quality. Come on, take a look. Don't be afraid. Uh, but yeah, I was saying there might be a notification coming up because this game is actually trying to update. And anytime I play a game when it's trying to update, it tells me it failed at some point. take a look. Don't be afraid. As if I don't know that by starting the actual app. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Okay, I need to know about... Yes! Joe Peterson. He's the villain here, isn't he? But you seem to know each other. I've known Joe for years. I saw him box once or twice. He was a friend then. But these days, he's just another thug. What can you tell me about Mr. Peterson? Besides his behavior toward you, obviously. Colossus Joe was a decent boxer. Good one, even. But after his wife passed away, he found every excuse to stop training. Just wanted to pick fights with everyone. Despair can be poison. It's essentially the same thing. It's never easy to find a new path in life. Especially after the loss of a loved one. But crime is certainly not the best option. We've all had some rough times, ain't we? But most of us don't use our fists to see us through. 
And no one has ever stood up to this thug. Nobody would be fool enough to stand against a wet boot boy. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, I already looked. Hello. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. I've forgotten everything about everything. Can I talk to you about your wife? Never you again? What do you want this time? No, still nothing. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. It was worth a shot. Okay, so... I have to remember where I'm actually going. You are blinded by your false faith! Imprisoned by your daily routine! Unable to see the true horror around you! Hello. Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son. Oh my god, I'm terrified. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. So you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's obvious only they have the necessary moral fiber. What on God's green earth? Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. I'm going to stop talking about his comments now. Nothing I have to say is nice. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. Well, you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. I might be able to do both. I am. But the answers I seek are based on facts, not superstition. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? Oh, All whoops. scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. Well, you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. But this way I get to ask both. Well, I suppose I can spare a few minutes listening to your so-called truth. As a doctor, you must be aware of a decimating epidemic. But let me tell you that this so-called Spanish flu it's just the beginning of the end. What do you mean? The beast is finally revealing itself, corrupting the flesh and the heart of men. With my own eyes, I have seen them, those minions from the abyss. Oh, as much as I would love to say this one. Really? And what would be your answer to this biblical threat? We must fight the disease before this legion outnumbers us. But not with scalpels and microscopes. No. What is left then? Cleansing fire. The Lord of Light. Tell me, Tobias. What exactly is your plan concerning the cleansing of this city? God will recognize his own. More than once this city has risen from the ashes, 
hardened and purified by the flames. Oh my god, he's even crazier than I thought. Uh, let's see. Purification by fire has proved useful, but where do you stop? Burn the clothes? The buildings? The corpses? Worse? Your lack of faith is predictable. But my task is to convince rational minds like yours to see the light. This is God's will. You're mad and dangerous. You're nothing but a soulless butcher. A small time Torquemada. The Savonarola of Whitechapel. My son, if you think salvation is a free gift, go listen to the lies of that pompous fool, Joseph. Joseph, a fool? Vicar Larrabee of St. Mary's Church. While he continues preaching his fraudulent redemption, more and more people die in the streets. Interesting. Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I send him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. Well, it's a cemetery. Is he preaching to the dead? You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. Okay, it was not fun talking to you. I have heard enough for tonight. Goodbye. What is his... Oh, his mesmerized level is five? Uh, but I need to kill him. Like, right now. Ugh. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry. I'm new to Whitechapel, but perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Well, you're much nicer. Let's ask about nonsense first. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. That's possibly moral. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Thank you, Dr. Reed, for agreeing with me. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. Um... I'm gonna go with criminal. If no one stops it, this epidemic could turn into a scourge. It may kill more people than the war itself. Yes, this is another kind of war, but just as deadly. History will judge us all for what we did and what we did not. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? Not entirely. I must confess, some of my rational views have been shaken by recent events. I'll remember to stay away from the district's roughest streets then.
Oh, nothing there either. I heard you are investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? Um... Yeah, I care about public I'm health. I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. I told you notifications would appear. He has no relatives at all? No, except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. That's definitely suspicious. Where did he throw Goodbye, it away? Mr. Darby. Farewell. Okay, so there are still two places I can go. And if I see anyone else on the way, I'll definitely be talking to them. Characters are getting more and more colorful. They're all, um, well, that priest. That's a character. I am definitely liking the way that the uh, the characters are going, though. I mean, I hate the fact that I can't kill that priest right now, but I do kind of like it as well. Forcing me to deal with him, even though I hate him. Which is obviously what you're supposed to do. That's the same poster as before. Oh, that has the potential to be nice. Farm dairy. What is this? Thank you. Come on. Look at it. Awesome. Oh. Yes. I was able to find the letter. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. That was awesome. Same notices as before. Can't enter the church. Oh, hi. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. Is she mute? I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Melia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Hmm. A stubborn and mute comrade. 
Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. Right then. Very well. Goodbye then. She was helpful. I think that's the same thing. I will still probably be looking at all of them. One of them may say something interesting. Move away so I can read that. Can I go through here? No. I think that's the graveyard. I don't th I don't really need to go there yet. That's a whole new thing, a whole new uh district. So, let's where exactly am I heading? <laughs> to get around the church somehow. Was there a road? Oh no, it's just this. Okay. Let's see if there's a way in the other direction. and trickery. You are alone. There we go. Yeah, that's not creepy at all. Lovely. Level 10. I think that is something I can handle. Maybe. Before I do that, where is it? It's not this. Here we go. Yeah, okay, instead of this... Let's do that. I didn't do anything. Are you kidding me? Time to, uh, mix up the weapons again. Because I think I'm gonna need some blood. Oh, God. Help. <laughs> Someone sent help. No one's that high a level, thankfully. Ouch. Stop doing that, you're a jerk. Good. You're dead. Oh, damn it. Those, those you really gotta watch out for. Okay, boosh. Okay, that... <sighs> this game just won't work with me and just makes me sound like an idiot. That almost ended horribly.
Okay, when I came in, there was definitely a dead body. Did I get what I needed? Eh, you know what? I don't care. Oh. That was a different thing than I was expecting. It actually, uh... Actually downloaded. Okay, good. Angel made flesh, I tell you. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. Okay, let's see. Tell me, Mr. Nithercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. And also Jack the Ripper. 30 years prior to this, but still. Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir. Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. Really? I got rude. <laughs> and have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know? Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? It certainly could. Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But, ah, will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? Well, she won't be of Whitechapel. In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, the barren smiles and the added hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about, and that's what Whitechapel is made of. I have found it a bit distressing myself, so... Did you know the Mute Florist is a member of a secret society? No, I didn't. But I thank you for this information, sir. For it only enriches the mystery surrounding the precious Camellia. Are you not curious? Is there not more you wish to know? That girl has not an ounce of malice in her. Whatever she may be hiding, it's certain to be for the benefit of most, if not all. Okay. I fear you are a hopeless romantic, Mr. Nethercote. Guilty as charged, Dr. Reed. That was a nice way of saying what I was thinking. That's where I was. Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. You know, I don't see anything wrong with Leicester Square. I understand your need for solitude. But it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, Doctor. And my family despises me. Oh, I know that feeling. If some misfortune came upon you, 
Who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear doctor. That's a fair point. May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. I'm glad I've made your day. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. Honey, move to the suburbs. You get all the quiet you want. Yeah, peaceful silence. Peaceful? That's quite an unusual way to speak about the epidemic. And very inappropriate, I must say. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But sorry, no, never heard of her. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. And we're bitter. I'll leave you alone, sir. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Okay, so I came in that way. That somehow isn't the graveyard, I guess. Because I'm supposed to meet a young preaching boy. A lot, aren't you, my friend? World already touched by grace. Where are you? Let me talk to you again. Oh, there you are. Beauty and great. Good evening, Mr. Nithercott. And good evening to you, too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? You don't really make a living from your scribblings, do you, Richard? No, sir, I don't. I work so hard. I put all my time, my energy, my devotion into the precise carving of words. Uh, let's see. Still, you don't seem to suffer from poverty. With thanks to my parents, actually. I'm afraid I would not be able to live on my own without their help. You seem embarrassed. Someday I hope to proudly offer my first publication to my parents. Until that day, I'll remain the failure of a son they have to support. It's unfortunate. I'll leave you alone, sir.
Okay, anything interesting around here? Anything to loot? Not a damn thing. 